Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falco Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered! Uh, today on Eclipse, it's going to be Light versus Best. This is another RJB replay. Top right, going to be a Brown Terran. It is a Light. And in the bottom left, a Yellow Protoss, who is Best. We also have Juno watching and Jum Jung Babu for some reason. Maybe they're just spectating this match. And it's going to be a PVT here for your Saturday. Okay, so most of the people are going to watch this on Saturday, but uh, if you're watching this on any other day of the week, leave me a comment. Let me know what day you're watching it on. I read every single comment that anyone ever makes on my channel, and I have been since 2015 when I started this YouTube channel. All right, so... <laughs> walling off with a pylon... And Probe Scouting. This is a two-player map. Eclipse. It's a variation on Third World, but... The main difference is... Not only probes can go up here. Right? Right. What is the answer here? Gateway opening? Of course it is. We're gonna go Gateway, then we're gonna go Cybercore. This positioning here makes me wonder... If he's going to go, did I try to go for a one-gate expand play? Which isn't... Oh, okay. So then he's... Oh, all right. That's actually pretty good. So if you delay your opponent's gas, that means they can't get a factory out too fast. And then what you can do is go for the one-gate expand opening, because it slows down their ability to do anything other than march marines across the map, which isn't going to do all that much damage to you, you know? So is that what he's doing? That's got to be what he's doing here. He's saving up that cash. Yeah, he committed to that gas steal, too. He's trying to mess with the SCV building this barracks, but Light is, you know, maybe the best Terran player on Earth right now. Now that Flash is effectively gone. So it's just he's not going to go ahead and, and uh, he's not going to have any problems with this at all. He has one SCV off. He's been doing this since before he can remember. So good. And so, okay, second pylon. And, oh, what did he just do? Best? Oh, he made a zealot. Oh, okay. Uh, so still, okay, no sign. Interesting. No real further tech choices here or macro choices here. He just makes a single zealot. He's going to move it across the map. He's going to force this SCV to juke him. And then maybe try to save the life of this probe so this marine doesn't kill him. So, yeah. I mean, at this stage, this is interesting. This is really weird. Light's not even trying to take down this assimilator. He's more interested. Oh, he takes the command center. He's like, okay, how about this? I bet, based on your opening, that you're going to expand fast. So guess what? I can do that, too. What a little non-standard PVT we've got here today from both of these players. This Zealot, though. Oh, that body block was disgusting. Oh, but he gets two Marine kills. Two Marine kills. And then he goes down. Wow, and the probe dies. So Zealot dies, probe dies, two Marines die. Yeah, so that's amazing. Light's like, alright, fine, you gas stole me. Well, that means you're probably going for a one get expand play yourself. So tell you what, I'm gonna go for a Rax expand. Get a bunker up and call it a day. Zealot number two has arrived. He doesn't have any probe support here, and man, took a lot of hits before even really being able to get in there at all. Chasing down, get in the bunker. There you go, getting in the bunker, and the Zealot's like, fine, you wanna get in the bunker? Chase me outside of the bunker, you cowards. <laughs> Uh, incredible. I guess the word coward's on my mind because I saw a stat on Twitter. This is a sports ball stat, by the way, but I'm going to relate it to StarCraft here, I think. But basically, Alabama has played three total out-of-conference road games in the last 15 years. Three. Which is insane to me. Basically, they will not play an out-of-conference road game. They will play you at home. If you're an out-of-conference opponent and they will play you at a neutral site, they do that, but they will not go into another home environment for somebody else. Isn't that nuts? And then also Coach K, Coach Krzyzewski for Duke Basketball, for American uh, Collegiate Basketball, as the Cybercore finishes in a second uh, gateways here too, yeah, he just basically stopped playing on the road as well against, you know, power conference teams. So it's like, you guys, you're two of the biggest legends. Nick Saman at Alabama, one of the greatest college football coaches of all time. Mike Krzyzewski, one of the greatest college basketball minds and coaches of all time. 
Are they? Why? Why do they have to? I don't feel like they even have to do this. I feel like if they did what everyone else does and just play a regular football schedule or play a regular basketball schedule, then they would still be lauded and still be applauded as much as they are. But you know what? I guess that's just kind of the mentality of people who are insanely competitive, right? You don't get to be like one of the most winningest college basketball coaches of all time in Shashevsky if you aren't trying to win, right? Hang on a second. I'm going to look this up real quick. All right, Dragoon, let's move out. Let's go. Winningest college basketball coach. Krzyzewski. Yeah, that's right. He's number one. And he's number one by like 200 games. So, yeah. The winningest. The winningest coach in all of college football. Man. Sorry, college basketball. Like he, he needs to do that stuff? I don't know, man. People who are at the top of their profession are psychopaths. I really do honestly believe that. To get to the top of your profession requires you to have a super will to succeed. And to step all over people and maybe skirt the rules and maybe break the rules and maybe break the law. Ugh. So third base coming up here from best. And yeah, just imagine, just imagine if Flash had given himself a little bit of an advantage when playing StarCraft. And everybody said, yeah, okay, it's Flash. He can do that. It's okay. Would your estimation, would your esteem of him fall down a notch? I feel like it would. Like, so home and away is not not a concept in esports, right? <laughs> well, maybe. Hmm. Maybe if you, like, fly 3,000 miles to a tournament and then face off against somebody where the tournament is in their hometown, that's a home advantage? I don't know. Anyway, just something to think about. Okay, so it's a PBT featuring two of the very best players in the world at this point. You know, you know how to beat Terran in PBT. Just out expand them, trade Dragoons for tanks, switch to carriers, hope that they don't see it, and then blah, 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 blah. You don't have to switch to carriers to win in PBT, but you do need to have more bases than your Terran opponent, okay? Because, as we all know, mech is super duper cost effective. And you're going to be on the end of some super inefficient trades. But if you have more bases and more workers and more income, you can more easily shrug that off. You just have to turn into a Zerg when you play against Terran. Oh, okay. That was... All right. Well, that didn't... That little DT drop sure didn't work out, did it? No, it did not, Best. Wow. That, was, that got nothing done. I don't think those DTs got a swipe off. Maybe a swipe here. Maybe on this siege tank. I think that's 44 damage. Yeah, okay, fair enough. So one swipe on a siege tank, but the shuttle dies and both DTs die. Brutal. Best put a lot of resources into that. Got nothing done with it. He can't feel good about that at all. It's getting storm. I mean, just every production tab, you can see it. You know what's going on here. It's siege tanks. It's vultures. It's upgrades for all of those things. It's all good. It's all good in the hood. I will tell you today, too, I watched Shawshank Redemption for the first time today. And you're like, but Falcon, how have you not seen this? So, it was a rated R movie from 1993, and at the time, I was living at home with my parents, and they didn't let me see rated R movies for any reason ever. They were the worst things in the world, right? So, I just never saw it when I was growing up, and then by the time I got to the point where I was old enough to kind of, like, move out and do my own thing, I was like, hmm, Shawshank Redemption. I mean, I've heard it's really good. It's, like, top five on every best movie list ever, it feels like. Another shuttle. Oh, storm drop! Storm drop! Okay, all right, that's the way to do it. Wow, one kill on that guy. Only only five SCVs died. A little disappointing. Especially because those High Templar are very... Look at this guy. He's like, no, no, no. No, 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 no. Nope. There's nope. There's nobody over here. I'm just... If you can't see me... I can't see me. I'm facing the wall. But anyway, yeah. I just... I don't know. I just figured it was a, it was a long... It is a long movie. It's like two and a half hours long. And it was about prison. And I'm like, that is... Doesn't seem like the kind of movie that I'm super interested in. And I'd already kind of had it spoiled for me, too. Like, I knew 
most of the basic story beats because it's such a famous film, right? But, I don't know. I watched it today and it was really good. I mean, what else would we expect from something that is on, you know, the top ten of every movie list ever made by anybody ever, pretty much? Ah, we can drop two, says Light. As he comes into the third base, Tank's going after some of these probes. Trying to... Oh my gosh. Who, you can't wall off, dude, Light. The drops, man. Look, Protoss knows the power of drops. Terran and Zerg, when they use the power of drops, mm, it's awesome. It's so much better than if you just try to go ground with everything. So good job. Good job by Light. Making that drop happen. Doesn't take down the third base, but a bunch of probes die. It's now, I mean, the Terran has more workers at 58 to 57 than the Protoss does. I love this expansion down here, too, to the south at about a 5 o'clock spot. But, anywho, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's really good. It's really well made. The performances are incredible. It's incredibly heartwarming in a lot of ways. It's really disturbing in other ways. So, I mean, that it's a combination of different feelings and moods. The music's incredible. It makes you feel things, even if you don't want to. So yeah, I will definitely, I can recommend Shawshank Redemption now. I've seen it. How's that for, for Falcon Review of the Week? All right, so probes get on into the very sneaky five o'clock base, as we were talking about. They kill a bunch of probes. They're gonna die, but they're okay with that. It's 62 to 59 workers for light. So look, snapshot right here, 11 minutes and 33 seconds. It feels like light has a really good handle on this game. He's doing fine. He really hasn't lost that many tanks. He lost the one that rolled in here to the third base, but it got some kills. The rest of the tanks seem totally happy. He's been doing a good job harassing with his vultures, which is something Terran players need to be taught, apparently. A lot of Terrans like to sit back and get three bases and then basically move out with an unstoppable mech army. But, you know, a good Protoss will out-expand you, and even if you get on three bases, it's not a guaranteed win. So what good Terrans will do is get the three bases and send out little vulture harassing raiding parties to try to kill probes, to slow down that economy, to kill, force the Protoss to build cannons. So their workers don't all die, which is resources they'd rather put into probes and attacking units like these ones. This is not a good engagement. Bad engagement. <laughs> uh, look, again, I'm fine with doing this if you're going to kill some tanks. But I just don't, I don't see it. Uh, I don't know, kind of winning on this northern corridor here. Okay, that's two tanks down. That's three tanks down. I don't know if three is necessarily enough to warrant all the Protoss that died there, but also denying this third base during the attack is pretty good too from Bass. Not too shabby. Not shabby at all. Oh, more cannons dying to Storm and Zealots and whatnot. A lot of SCVs getting killed just because they're in the wrong place at the wrong time. Now it's 61 to 58 worker advantage. Oh, and better. In favor of Best now. Best just took this position where he was not doing super hot. And made it a lot better. Really, really trying to kill this third command center here. And you know what? I think it's working. It's working great. These Dragoons have plus one attack. They're going to get it into the red at least. Oh, maybe they're not going to get it into the red at least. Yeah, these tanks are like, get out of our third base. This is our home. You too good for your home? They tried to kill that siege tank. No, did not happen. But guess what? More zealots coming on in. Defensive matrix up on that siege tank. Blah, 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 blah. Not enough zealots to really do this, but they want to finish off the tank that took a couple hits and never mind retreating. Why would you retreat there? You're not making it out. You're one zealot. If you're part of a group of like 12 zealots and you retreat, sure, you're probably making it out. But if you make it... Oh my gosh. Not really how that works, is it? <laughs> If you're one zealot and you try to retreat and there's a million units around, you're going to die. At, go down fighting, man. You'll be brought back as a Dragoon anyway. Doing another base here from Best on the right side. This is what we're talking about. Best is doing awesome. Remember when I was like, Light, he's winning. And then two minutes later, I was like, no, no, no. Best, he's winning. That's how StarCraft be sometimes, especially at the highest level. It's really hard to predict the future in these higher level games. The lower level games, you can kind of sniff out what's going to happen next. Right? You can see, like, okay, this player seems to have better control. This player's using spell casters, and that one's not. Stuff like that, right? Oh, good snipe on that High Templar. See, if a lower level player did that, I'd be like, that player's winning. But because it's the highest level, I don't know. Best is really good, too. Light's doing amazing stuff, but he's got to do amazing stuff to have a chance of winning this game. Another shuttle goes down. Boo, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful defense there 
from Light. How many tanks died? I don't know, but the tank count doesn't seem incredibly intimidating here at 15 minutes, does it? There are seven, eight, nine, like ten or so? Meanwhile, Volters cruising around, speed of sound, uh, trying to find what they can do, and eh, they could probably burn down this cannon. There's only one cannon and a zealot defending this, so yeah. Everything dies real quick. And then, you're going to die, but hey, the zealots come in first. You can kill some of those for basically free. Okay, a couple of Volters did die there. Not ideal. Whoa, try to scroll with the mouse. I do that sometimes because it works in StarCraft 2, but it does not work in Brood War. Not at all. So saves the base, loses a zealot and a cannon. Not a big deal. These probes uh, changed. Whew, evacuated right on over. Kitter and Amulet is almost done for best. Vultures, no. It's a lot of zealots, man. Oh, more High Templar are getting sniped by vultures here, too. Dude, light. Look. That's just, it's a game winning strategy. Like, if y'all. If you need to practice something in StarCraft, I would say work on your build order so it's really crisp. But number two is like work on sniping High Templar in the enemy Protoss army. Whether you're Protoss, Terran, or Zerg, you can do it, right? There's different ways you can make it happen. Just target firing them from distance with Dragoons works. Picking them off with Mutalisks is a thing. Vultures, as we've been seeing in this game, is another way to do it. This is how we do it. And oh, another attack in from Bass. He's trying to get on top of those tanks. On the right side, Vultures dodging storms as well as they can. Left side, also dodging storms well as they can. See, Tanks just kind of sitting back. Oh, no, the Zealots have gotten through. They've kind of busted through the Vulture line. How did that happen? But Zealots died. They took a lot of units with them there. Are you going to support your guys? No. Everyone's going to retreat. This Archon's actually going to summon. And then it's going to take a ton of damage from these Archon or these Vultures, and then it will die. Because shields take full damage from everything. It is a weakness of the shield in StarCraft, as it is weak to everything. Not weak to, but man. Taking full damage from every single thing that ever attacks you on your shields is massive. Tis a massive problem, but yeah, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you're interested in helping the channel to grow. You know? That's what I'm here for. I'm here for growth. I'm here for bringing StarCraft to the masses on an even higher level. You can also support me at patreon.com slash falcon paladin and clicking the join button down below will do it too. If you want to support me on YouTube, if you're not really a Patreon person, which I understand a lot of people are not, uh, for varying reasons. But fourth base here for Light. Love that from him. He is down a little bit in supply, but you know, he's got the siege tanks and whatnot. And the Goliaths and the Vultures. Is there any sign of carrier production back home for best? Production tab says no. We'll keep an eye on that one though. And once again, just enough army to defend the fourth base, the new source of battle. Third base was it, now it's the fourth base of light. And Bess is doing what he needs to do. Keep all the pressure on the Terran, try to pick off tanks, try to kill individually, even spider mines that die, that's a small win. And expand a bunch at the same time. He's taking this left side base now too, at about, I don't know, the 10 o'clock. We'll say that's a 10 o'clock. So that's his one, two, three, four, five, that's his sixth total base here. He's doing everything right economically. Ah, oh, but this vulture attack is absolutely brutal. Oh, that's a lot of probes getting transferred over to this base. So they're pretty much all dead. It knocks be he best had a huge worker lead. And now he's down to 53. 61 SCVs, 53 probes. That timing was impeccable from light. Absolutely sick. Again, this is another great RJB replay. Check him out at RJB TV on YouTube. You'll find him. Search RJB StarCraft. I believe he's just at YouTube.com slash RJBTV now. I think it got a new fancy URL. If I remember seeing that correctly on the last Sunday stream, which I can also recommend is a really fun time. They're 11 a.m. Eastern. They're streamed live here on YouTube. You don't have to go anywhere else. And I do cast professional games mixed in with some user-submitted games, which is fun. We get a lot of fastest map out there. We do get some one-on-ones. We get, you know, 4v4s. Players sending in their user map settings games, like maybe phantom mode replays and things like that. But anyway, every Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern, which is later in Europe, like afternoon, evening. But anyway, another attack from Bess, getting some decent storms off. Are those The tank gets defensive matrix and then stormed and then zealots finish it off. Bess is making some good trades here. He still has a bunch of profiles remaining. 
after the initial salvos, which is kind of insane. That's not usually how that works, and several more tanks go down. Okay, so Bess is taking some serious hits to his economy, but he has enough nexuses that he can kind of just keep pumping probes here as much as he wants. Tank count continues to be unimpressive. This is four, five, six, seven of them. Seven, seven siege tanks. Okay, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 12 siege tanks does really not seem enough to defeat an elite Protoss player here. Light is on the back foot. I'm just calling it. I'm calling it right now. Light is back footing it at the moment. Spider mine. Ah, catching it again. Ah, tanks not in siege mode, doing pretty well against Archons that way. Again, everything's pretty good against Archons, though. Look. Big attack into the fourth base while the tanks are out of position a little bit. Those four tanks that were inside the fourth base are dead. They're all very gone now. Suddenly it's 148 to 129 supply. The Protoss is up. He's just been making sure the tank count never gets into the insane levels, and it hasn't been. More reinforcements from Best coming up from the bottom side. More reinforcements from Light. He does have a bit of a defender's advantage here as the Science Festival gets picked out of the sky. But look at this. Look at all of this income here from the Protoss. He's doing great. Best is not taking into carriers. He says, who needs carriers? I'm just going to keep making gateway units. And everything will be fine. I mean, technically, like High Templar aren't gateway units, but they come out of the gateway. So, they are also kind of gateway units. <laughs> anyway, Spider Mine's getting wiped out. Another attack down to the south here from Los Vultures. I don't know, man. It's 184 to 151 supply. I know what I said about mech being really cost efficient. And it is, but there's a certain level. When it just, uh, you're just outnumbered, and even if you're cost efficient, you're just going to lose battles anyway. Mm, Light trying to take a top left hand base here, like that quite a bit. Man, this kind of reminds me of the amazing PVT that I cast between Artosis and some unknown Protoss player on this map just last week. If you missed that one, you should check it out. It's Artosis versus I think Hajin is his name. It's an insane, down to the wire, nobody has anything left kind of an epic game. I know my epic games don't always aren't always the same, but this is one of those. So if that's what you're into, check it out, man. It's some good stuff. Anywho, another attack here from Best. Once again, the goal isn't necessarily to win with these battles, but it is supposed to win this top left-hand corner. Oh man, plus 3 attack, plus 1 armor for these dragoons. 3 2 upgrades for the tanks. They have the upgrades they need. Why are these High Templar wandering to their deaths? Dude, best. 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 Oh, he gets a storm off. Okay, he just lost like six High Templar and got one storm out of him, but it doesn't really matter. This is too much Protoss, man. And the number of bases, the math doesn't lie at this stage of the game. It really doesn't. The tank count is not hot. The base count is just favoring the Protoss. He's got every base available to him right now. I guess he could take the top left base if he really wanted to twist the knife at this stage of the game. But product, I mean, 161 to 127 supply. Tanks are good. Vultures are good. Spider mines are good. All these units are good. But if a Protoss is allowed to just take as many bases as they want this uh, for, for this long, right? Okay, so Light is finally making an actual push at 23 minutes. Onto this bottom right-hand base of best. The siege tanks show up. I think there's enough Protoss to actually break this. Like, it's not even close. So they should be able to save the Nexus. No big deal. Yeah, Best is like, just keep mining, little Probitos. We will keep you safe. And then the Vultures run in, and they're like, oh, nom, 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 nom. Our time is short. We must kill as many of these probes as we can before we get killed by the Zealots. We're not usually getting killed by Zealots, but this time there's not a lot of places to micro, and our micro attention seems to be elsewhere. So we're just going to die back here. Still, 50 probes from Best. Not hot. But he's got a lot of available mineral patches for those 50 probes, right? He's got a bunch of bases where he's not oversaturating himself, which is good. The 59 workers that, yeah, that the Terran has are effectively scrunched onto two bases right now. So he's oversaturated. The income has got to be favoring Best here quite a bit, just on saturation level alone. Here comes another attack. Best has been relentless here, getting the storms up. This is how you play PvT. It's not like the most clean textbook version I've ever seen. That goes to Light versus Flash. 
when Light was off racing as Protoss, Go Figure, and Flash was playing Terran. That's probably the most incredible PBT I've ever cast as far as textbook goes. But this is good. I mean, this is as good as it's going to get on an average PBT. It's not legendarily good, but I mean, best has hit all those check boxes, every single thing you want to put together if you're going to take down an elite Terran as a light. And this is it. This is how it works, man. Speaking of Artosis, he probably watches this game and goes, Protoss is overpowered, man. And it's like, well, yeah, if they're allowed to do what they want to do, sure, they definitely are. They're definitely very hard to deal with once they're on six bases. And they've been slowly depleting your tank count over the course of the last forever. And that's your GG. GG best is your winner in 25 minutes and 38 seconds. An absolutely, truly fantastic, fantastic display. Woof. That was just, that was best. That was best at his best. Ha ha ha. Dad jokes. Dad jokes coming at you all the time. I just, I'm trying to figure out what else we want to do here. And I mean, I think we talked it up. I think best expanded a bunch, killed tanks, got upgrades, got that storm, went for a storm drop. Even the drops kind of fizzled out after the first few minutes. I was hoping for more of them from both players, but that never really happened, did it? And then it's weathering the storm, like a Zerg player will do. A Zerg player will lose, you know, five, six, seven probes in an attack and replace them. And that's what Best is doing here. Best is like, yeah, you killed a bunch of my probes today. A lot of probes died. But he ends it with 50 workers. He ends it with a lot of available mineral patches. These three bases of mineral patches. Sure, he's mined out most other places. But again, three bases is better than two. And just never let light really build up. Like, I think a mistake a lot of Protoss will make is they get a light. They get a light. They get another Terran player into a tough position like there was five minutes ago. And then they just kind of hold back and macro up and try to max out and then come back. And then the Terran has the ability to remax themselves and get a ton more tanks out. But man, if you just keep that pressure up as a Protoss, spend your money well. That's a lot to ask, I know, but continue to come back with attacks time and time and time again. Don't let the Terran get comfortable. And that is exactly what happened here today. Best. Serious business. So 201,000 points for best. 190 for light seems fair. Did outproduce the Protoss light did today and killed more stuff. Hmm, that's interesting, actually. Killed more, but not enough to make up for the discrepancy? That's weird. I guess there were a lot of units remaining at the end of the game there, but I mean, yeah. Just the total outspending here. 16,000 resources in 25 minutes. That's a huge, massive difference in overall income there for just a 25-minute game, so well done. Well done there by best. I just, I have no notes. Sometimes I have notes in these games, even though I am nowhere near as good as any of these dudes. But I do have full vision of the map at all times, and it kind of gives me insights into what's going on. Anyway, well done. Good game. Oh, and that's going to be it for me today. So this has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered. Go ahead. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch. All at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself. Mm -hmm.